السلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله closer and respect to the beyond, try and sit in the Tahiyyat position. And if you get tired, then sit in any position which you find comfortable. Lower your gaze and listen to the beyond with full concentration. Because by looking here and there, by playing on the floor with your fingers, or by placing, or by playing with your clothes, body or hair, it is possible that you may not gain all the blessings. It is mentioned in Pradosul Akbar that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said, O people, the one who sends the root upon me in abundance in this world will be granted quick relief from the calamities and accounting on judgment day. My dear Islam brothers, Alhamdulillah Azza wa we are all Muslims. And every, Muslim, every action of a Muslim must be to please Allah Azza wa and his beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Unfortunately, in this day and age, a large number of Muslims are getting further away from the path of doing good deeds. Perhaps this is the reason why we are facing so many problems in our lives. On a daily basis, we meet people who suffer from illnesses, some are in debt, others face relationship problems at home. Many suffer from financial hardship and are jobless. Some cannot have children, while those who do have them are, job are extremely worried because of their disobedience. In short, every one of us is facing numerous problems. At times, we ask these questions. Why are we suffering from all this? What have I done to deserve this? My dear Islam brothers, the bitter truth is that it's our own actions that are to be blamed. Allah Azza states in the Holy Quran, translation comes to the mind, and whatever affliction reaches reach you is due to what your hands have earned, and he pardons much. But Islam brothers, asking the question is the easy part, but accepting the answer and rectifying the cause of our misfortune is the difficult way. Today we are all searching for easy cures. We are not ready to analyze our own actions. Wherever you see, he is after a quick solution by getting a taweez, etc. Nobody is ready to look at their own actions. There is no doubt that solution to all our problems, both of this world and the hereafter, lies in the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal and his beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anh said that whoever starts doing the actions that Allah Azza wa has commanded us to do, that Allah Azza wa will fulfill all his needs. But sadly today we are preoccupied ourselves with worldly tasks to such an extent that we have even forgotten what task Allah Azza wa has ordered us to do. For Muslims the first obligation is Salah. How sad, today our massages are empty. Salah is a pillar of Islam, but sadly we have lost its significance in our lives. Salah earns us the pleasure and mercy of Allah Azul. Salah wipes away sins. It protects us from illnesses, both physical and spiritual. Through Salah, our prayers are accepted. Through Salah, there is blessing in our sustenance. There is light in the grave. Salah will save us from the punishment of the grave, and it is a key to heaven. Salah will ease our passage on the bridge of Sirat and it will protect us from the punishment of hell. Salah is the coolness to the eyes of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu The person who prays Salah will receive the intercession of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and most importantly on the day of judgment he will get the honor of seeing Allah Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Salah is the soul of all ibadat. The pious criticisms are stated that if a person does not perform his salah, then no other ibadat performed by him or her is accepted. And if a person loves salah and is punctual, then Allah willing, his or her wrongs will all be forgiven. We should thus try our best to perform our salah and also show strictness in our homes so that our families may also perform the salah. Hazrat Isa once passed by a river. 
There he saw a beautiful and elegant looking bird lying in a puddle of mud and dirt. The bird's entire body was covered with filth. He then noticed this bird come out of the mud and then dive into the river until he was clean and beautiful again. Thereafter the bird once again flew into the dirt and mud and became covered with filth. Once more the bird left the mud and flew into the river again until he was clean and beautiful again. This astonishing act was repeated five times. Hazrat Isa began to wonder as to the reason for this strange sequence of events. Sayyidina Jibra'il Amin salam, descended and told him, This bird is like a human from the Ummah of the Holy Prophet sallam. Each time he sins, he becomes unclean. And when he performs this salah, then Almighty Allah purifies him, just like the mud and dirt that was cleansed from the bird. It has been, it has been narrated that when a person salah is accepted, then as a reward, Almighty Allah Azzawajal creates an angel that remains in ruku and sujood, making tasbih until the day of Qiyamah. The reward of all the ibadat of this angel is recorded in his book of deeds. It has been stated in authentic sources that on the day of Qiyamah, as the people will be passing over the bridge of Sirat, which is thinner than a hair and sharper than a sword, there will be a group of people who will say that they are too scared and fearful to cross over the bridge. Sayyidina Jibra'in asked them how they used to cross the oceans in the world. They would say that they did so with ships. On hearing their answers, the masjid that they worshipped in will be bought and they will sit in this masjid and pass safely over the bridge of Sirat. My dear Islam brothers, we need to perform our salah. This will assist us in this world, in our graves and on the day of Qiyamah. Ibadat only comes into place after Iman. And the greatest of all ibadat is Salah, which is also the first form of Islam after Iman. And the excellence of Salah can be derived from this, that all the other faraid were revealed on the earth, but Salah was granted to Rasulullah on the night of Miraj, even further than the Arsh and the Fursi. Salah is that ibadat which was performed by every Nabi in his time in his way. It is the only ibadat which is performed five times daily by men, women, old, young, travelers, the rich and the poor. Salah spiritually exhausts man and cures his physical and spiritual illnesses. It protects man from sins and vulgarism. The Holy Prophet once said, asked the Sahaba, if any dirt would remain on the body of a person who bathes five times daily in a stream in front of his home. They said that no dirt would remain. He then said, this is the example of the five daily Salah. Any person who reads this five daily Salah is purified of his sins and bad doings by Allah <coughs> Hazrat Abu Zar <coughs> states that it was winter and the Holy Prophet came out of his hujah. He went to a tree, held its branches, shook it. This caused his leaves to fall off easily. He then said, Oh Abu Zar, I replied, La Baik Ya Rasulullah. He said, When a Muslim reads sal Salah for Allah, then his sins falls like the leaves of this tree. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was questioned concerning which actions were the most loved and closest to Allah. He replied by saying to perform salah in its appointed time and he who leaves salah has no deen. Salah is a pillar of deen, the miraj of a moment and a sign of success. An intelligent man is one who goes from a low position to a high position and an ignorant man is the one who proceeds from a high position to a low position. My dear Islam brothers, are these gifts not enough for us to pray a salah on a regular basis? But think to yourself that how much do we value these gifts? We will wake up at 4 a.m. every morning to go to work, but it is too difficult for us to wake up to pray our Fajr Salah. If we are expected to be at work at 6 a.m., we will get up two hours early just to be on time. And even then, we will not leave the Allah, put the alarm on. Because of this fear of getting late for work, we will not be able to have a pleasant night's sleep. But when it comes to Salah, the common excuse is, I cannot wake up. On the other hand, Allah Azzawajal orders us in the Holy Quran that Salah has been made further upon you at a set time, at set times. This is the value of the order of Allah Azzawajal to us that even during the prayer time, we continue performing worldly tasks. Unfortunately, we place more emphasis on taking responsibility of our worldly tasks than following the orders of Allah Azzawajal. Why shouldn't we then suffer from all the misfortunes that come upon us? A person who does not pray Salah, he
he earns the wrath of Allah Azza wa Whoever misses that salah intentionally, his name is written on the gate of hell through which he will enter. Those who are lazy in offering the salah, the grave will squeeze them so tightly that the ribs will crush and mingle into each other like the like fingers of two hands. Fire will then be burning in the graves and a snake will be appointed to punish them. My dear sons and brothers, punishment of the grave is a fact which you cannot deny and it is proved from the Holy Quran itself. When the disobedient followers of Sayyidina Nuh salam, were destroyed in the great flood, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Holy Quran the punishment of the grave in Surah Nuh. Translation from Zuliman. And because of their wrongdoings, they were drowned and then made to enter the fire. This is the word of Allah Azza wa Jal, which we cannot deny. Yet we find it difficult to understand the punishment of the grave simply because we cannot see it being carried out. This is why we have forgotten the punishment of the grave completely and continue committing <coughs> sins on a daily basis. However, to teach us a lesson, sometimes Allah Azza wa Jal reveals upon us the punishment of the grave. Listen to an incident and make intention of never missing your salah. Someone once said that his sister died. They buried there and accidentally at the time of burial, his wallet, which had important documents in it, had fallen inside the grave. He only realized it after he had come back home. So he went back to the grave, dug up his sister's grave. The moment he opened up the grave, he saw that fire was burning inside his sister's grave. And flames started to come out. Straight away, he closed the grave and filled it back up as fast as he could. He came running to his mother and asked, Oh mother, what actions did my sister used to do? The mother's mother said, why, do I, why are you asking? He then told the whole incident. His mother started crying and with tears rolling down her eyes, she said, your sister was lazy in offering her prayers. Lazy in offering her prayers. She used to offer her prayers, but after the time had passed, many daza. This is just one of many incidents where people have seen with their own eyes the deceased being given different punishments in the grave. My dear Islam brothers, when delay in offering Salah carries such a punishment, then how about the punishment of not praying Salah at all? Listen to a hadith of our Holy Prophet وسلم, regarding a person who is lazy in offering the Salah. It is stated in Bukhari Shif that our Holy Prophet, that the beloved Prophet وسلم, once told the Sahabi Quran that tonight Jibra'il Islam and Mikail Islam came to me and took me to the sacred place. And I saw that a person is lying down with another person standing at his head with a heavy stone in his hand. The second person repeatedly kept throwing the stone on his head, which crushed his head. After being crushed, his head would return to a normal shape, and the whole episode would start all over again. Upon healing, upon inquiring, I was told that this person forgot the Holy Quran after memorizing it, and he used to sleep at the time of Salah. This 